Hey, Internet. It's Paul. It's Matt. The Dork Lords. We're here today talking about Star Trek Strange New Worlds, Season 2, Episode 3. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Little uh, Macbeth reference there for us. What? What? <laughs> Wasn't there a uh, Macbeth episode back in the original series? I think, I think there was like some Macbeth actors who were... Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> we open with Lan dealing with the psychological baggage of her con legacy. Una's trial has brought up her feelings of shame, anger, fear that she may become a monster like Khan, and as the doctor says, Loneliness. Um, actually, I think my favorite line of the episode comes when she's sparring with the doctor. Really? And he's trying to give her medical advice. And she's like, look, you're not here as a physician. You're my sparring partner. And so he says, <laughs> as your sparring partner, I'd advise you to talk to your physician. <laughs> Maybe he could help. <laughs> anyway, so I was like, well played. <laughs> well played. <laughs> so um, in the middle of all that, she gets a visit from... Star Trek's version of the Time Variance Authority, who gives her a time turner, tells her she has to stop an attack in the past, and dies. She is now in an alternate timeline enterprise, uh, captained by James T. Kirk. We end with La'an back in the proper timeline. She calls Kirk with the excuse of confirming information about his brother. Uh, Kirk... Obviously has no idea who she is, though he is alive. Um, she hangs up, realizes that she must embrace her Noonien Singh legacy, and acknowledges that the relationship she had with alternate timeline Kirk is now officially a memory, leaving her once again alone, which was kind of like the, the premise at the beginning. Like, you were dealing with a lot of loneliness. So she bursts into tears. Um, notably, the camera focuses on the watch that came yes. with her yes. from the alternate timeline, uh, and we roll credits, kind of a cathartic moment. Uh, Paul, yes. mm -hmm. what did you think of episode three? Um, I liked it. Uh, there were things I didn't like. Um, I had to watch it a few times. Uh, okay. And so, yeah, my emotions went up and down. Um but uh, the core of it uh, is Noonien Singh, uh, Soon Singh. And, uh, um, you know, I like the actress that, uh, you know, actor that uh, plays the part and uh, I like the character. Um, and I like the, uh, you know, the time investigation department. Um, you know, I like them when they first uh, showed up in uh, Deep Space Nine. Where do you want to start? The beginning if there is such a thing uh the episode about the triples there um you gotcha know. gotcha so yeah i uh and and i think the you know that uh, agent was well cast actually uh, i thought uh, she was uh, rather good too so oh right the one at the end yeah uh, they, we yeah, see yeah, two yeah. agents yeah 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 the first guy meh, he's okay <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's fine he's dead so who cares <laughs> Yeah, I like Paul Wesley when he first appeared in James Kirk. I know some people were, you know, not crazy about him. Um, but I think, you know, we we're seeing another side yet to James Kirk. Yeah, and, I liked uh, him too. I liked him too. I thought I, maybe, he, you know, he's we're seeing a younger version of Kirk maybe. So he, he seemed a little jokey perhaps for Kirk, but I liked the, I liked the performance generally. So I was, I was on board with it. I wasn't taken out of it like, that's not Kirk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I feel like this story was developed with the ending first, which is a perfectly acceptable way to tell a story. But sure. I think they wanted Laan with a gun standing over a defenseless kid Khan, like choosing whether or not to sure. kill b baby sure. Hitler Khan. Yes, yes. Um, and so in some ways they achieved the reverse of City on the Edge of Forever. Sure. Where, so in that episode, Kirk has to let someone he cares about die in the past in order to save the future. Yes. Here, Laan has to save someone that she despises to protect the future. So yes. anyway, it's just kind of an interesting little switcheroo on yeah. the 
Um, so yeah, so it's yes, really interesting I, yeah. too to me as a, as a side note. Um, uh, it reminds me of uh, Doctor Who episode wherein uh, someone says, "You've got a time machine. I've got a gun. What the hell? Let's kill Hitler." <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's a it's one of those tales that you hear about for the longest time. It was like, well, did you go back in time to kill Hitler? Is that who we were? Right. Was, was it, uh, would it be okay to kill him? Was it a Deadpool? Uh, I think one of the Deadpool movies. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. All right. <sighs> Maximum effort. Yes, yes, he yes. Like, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. like, ah, oh, kill Hitler. That's fine. It was also, I, I liked in the alternate timeline, we got this quick shot of Spock and Kirk, you know, on, on the basically their own ships yes talking to each other yes. spock is desperately requesting <laughs> urgent yeah. he's like yeah, yeah. no yeah. I, we're not gonna do that yeah um like yeah. oh <laughs> um but one of the one of the things that makes alternate version kirk uh agree to help uh laon even though he knows that that means the destruction of his himself essentially his own yes. reality yes is that uh his brother sam had died in his reality and so it's like yes. oh wait you mean in the other this other one uh he's alive uh it gives him motivation to perhaps make that one more of a reality yeah the earth being better meh i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right the earth is a yeah. giant toxic cloud and you can't ever see the sun well my, my brother you know yeah, spock is my friend meh i don't know he <laughs> seems kind of cold over there <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know that guy whatever um Kind of like you, though, I'm, I'm a little mixed on this episode. I think in a vacuum, this is like, a, if you just look at it as a story of someone coming to terms with their family legacy, choosing to do what's right over what's expedient, uh, finding someone and then losing them. Uh, you know, I think all that works uh, quite well as a story. But I think, you know, it's when you view it as an episode of Star Trek, I think there's starting to become some issues. I mean, first of all, you know, we're now a third of the way through the season. So, three out of ten. Sure. Um, and Captain Pike has barely made an entrance. I mean, for episode one, we learned that the showrunners wrote him off that episode so that he could have time off to be with his newborn child, as they should, and I'm glad they did. Uh, but now three episodes in? Yeah. I mean, I have to ask, what was he taking time off from? <laughs> like, was he even in the show? Like, he's really not in this season so far. I mean, we had a we had an episode where he was like, "Hello, goodbye." Then he had an episode of him watching a screen, and now this episode he's not even in that timeline. So it's like, whoop. So I'm like, I you know, I assume he's going to be in. I mean, in fact, the trailer for the next week shows that he seems to be a bigger part on that episode. But that's mm -hmm. three episodes. That, that's a lot. That's a lot to be like, you know. Kind of reminds me a little bit. There was this guy earlier this week. Uh, there was a picture of him. Uh, he was at an inner Miami. Uh, soccer game, mm -hmm. uh, dejectedly holding up a sign. It said, traveled 1,200 miles to see the greatest of all time. Um, he was talking about Lionel Messi, who was certainly on the short list for one of the greatest soccer players of all time, and who just signed a contract to play for Inter-Miami. Yes. Uh, unfortunately for this fan, signing a contract does not equal playing for the team. Uh -huh. And so his first game won't be for a couple of weeks. But this uh -huh. guy like, well, oh my God, uh -huh. I get to see Lionel Messi. This would be awesome. Well, he's not even in the stadium? Yeah. <laughs> oh, hell. So, Captain Pike is the Lionel Messi, is my point, of Strange New Worlds. And we need to get him in the game, baby. Get him in the game. No, Let's get some playing saying, time. Okay, so are you, would you rewrite this to put him in the episode more? Um, like, for instance, I guess you could have made him Laon's uh, sparring partner. That's true. That's, I mean... Yeah, yes, I'd find a way to get Captain Pike in, in more of these episodes. Yeah. Yes. Well, I wouldn't. <laughs> okay. All right, um, fair enough. <laughs> you know, I think it's what, what, you know, what we always say, or, you know, that uh, you want a strong uh, ensemble cast. So, you know, you yeah. have the characters in there that are, you know, and, you know, if you would put him in any other part of this episode, that means the other people would be in there less. Mabenga, you could argue he wasn't that much in the first season. And so, you know, someone who is tending to someone's emotional needs, it should yep. be the doctor. Yep. Um, yep. And so, I agree. you know, and, uh, you know, while 
I might say that the um, inclusion of Carol Kane was slightly strained. <laughs> you know, it's like it's yeah. like oh, we got somebody back in time, and you know, magically they're able to go to Vermont. But I got you. You're saying that it, you will take time away from these other characters. You know, where do you actually put the the guy? In? I got you. Yeah, I got you. I'm yeah. just saying. You know, I it's like I think there's a threshold. There's a threshold at which it's fine, and it's probably still within that threshold, frankly. But let's assume. Maybe in the last seven episodes, what if in like another two of those episodes, like he's not in? You're like half the season, like you're just like you wrote off what I consider to be your probably best character. I'd be, I'd find ways to get him in the show. That's yeah, I would. Yeah. Okay. All right. All <laughs> right. gonna, you know, it's like they, it should be a stronger show. You know, the, the knock against the first series was that it was uh, the the three, you know, with the, with two extras, the three extras or whatever. You know, they I didn't focus on uh, Uhura and uh, Chekhov and Sulu and Scotty enough. And I agree with that. So, uh, yeah, while I've heard that from a number of people, I've, yeah, I just... I just you're, uh, you're disagreeing. Okay. Yeah. All right. I got you. I, yeah. And that, I hear that argument, and, and that argument makes sense. It's just... The thing for me... I do feel like I, 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 this show feels better when he's on it. That's all. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Um, the thing for me that... Uh, was sort of I sort of fought with this like while it was funny that it took place in Canada <laughs> mm. they even made the joke like yes. oh we're in New York yes no we're not <laughs> yeah. it's Toronto yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where they shoot and it's just a cheaper thing and, you know yep. and, and it's that's a cheaper thing uh, but that's true yeah so I think what you're saying is you, you, maybe you're, you're talking about the like the budget, in other words, for the show. Is that yeah, what yeah, yeah, yeah. And also too, it's like you know that car uh, chase scene. Yeah. I wasn't in love with. You know, while it was, I believe the kit. What was going on between the two? Uh, you know, what was going on around them seemed less than inspired for for me personally. Yeah, and I. I mean, I just feel like this was you know it's coming again on the heels of the courtroom episode, which was very effective. But it succeeded as a talking heads drama mm. with kind of a lowered, like a, a single set style production cost. And so this is taking place in modern day Toronto. I'm just wondering if, you know, did, maybe there were cutbacks to the show's budget because it does feel like two episodes in a row have been like, how do we keep this budget acceptable? It made me also wonder, is that the reason that they broke canon? Right. So they they moved Khan's life and career back decades the reality of it is that the uh events of Kani Nuni and Singh like happened in the 90s or something so right he was uh, born I think in like 59 and then right in the 90s he was like becoming you know tired. right so the events of uh the wars are supposed to have happened in our time and they haven't so I think they're you know what I've heard is people are saying that look you know uh in order to make it Still, the world that we live in that we live it should in, be in, in, in our future and not in world. our yeah yeah okay okay well I, no that makes sense I I I because I, I just thought you know and it it's felt, something it, too in the moment I thought did they just decide hey we are going to film one way or another in modern day Toronto so if our story is going to need to be a period piece we ain't doing it. Uh, let's just move the dates, you know. So, okay, you, you sounds like your your idea sounds uh, a better one. I would, I I hope that's the case. The other thing I want to bring up is also that the sort of subtext of that is this: that the universe is trying to make things happen, even if people are trying to must mess with it. That's something that you know, Sarah, the uh, time assassin says same way that basically what they were saying about the kelvin universe in the star trek movies it was like you know it's like how did they all end up together even after everything that happened well because the universe wants them to be together Keep you know things. it's like yeah, yeah. it's like even though that that's the part about that it's like okay this is a conscious universe <laughs> yeah. right. it's like uh, not god yes. It's a conscious universe that loves Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would probably be the explanation that may be given for the convenience of the watch tricorder. Yeah, right? yeah, sure. Because it's like, they're like, oh, when we get near to the cold fusion, it'll light up. It'll glow. Yeah. You're in Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> There's 
like seven million people there. That is a massive city. To think you could just walk the streets, hoping it would. I mean, yeah, yeah. come on, now that yeah, sounds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Damn near impossible, yeah. but be, hey, the universe wants it to happen, <laughs> so it did it. Um, oh, yeah. but you just brought up the chess thing; it just made me laugh. On the like, this is not a, a criticism, really. It's just a, an observation. But it's just when so Kirk's like they're looking for a way to get cash. Yeah, and Kirk's like, "Give me a few minutes." That's like, that's his line. So then they go, and he yeah. proceeds to play yeah. several games of chess in the park. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's no clock, and they're not playing speed chess. No, they're they're at a table, yeah, 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 and yeah. we see him play multiple games, at yeah, least yeah, three, yeah. I think, games. Yeah, and so like Lon oh, must be standing two, there, two. watch him yes. play, yes. like for hours, yeah, like yeah. hours yeah, yeah, would yeah. have would have yeah. gone by, which is not a big deal. It's just time is apparently of the essence to them. So like, let's kill some well, hours. Well, you could argue that chess. it's not of the essence because they spend a lot of time just hanging out and having hot dogs, you know. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Still, well, we, we've seen least, him yeah. play the 3D chess <laughs> yes, in the yeah. uh, original series. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That, that was a reference. I was like, oh, this, this is a freaking, you know, a cakewalk compared to yeah, 3D chess. Yeah, <laughs> But um, I was on the chess team in high school, Paul. Yes. I got my chess nerd cred. So there yeah. you go. All right. Um, in high school, I lost one match in high school, and it was to this guy at Grace Christian Academy. <laughs> so to him, Christians. Anyway, uh, but he he got ahead of me by a point early. Like he mm. took my knight, which is three points. I took two of his pawns, which is two points. So it was a, it, he had he was up with one point. And the way we were playing is we had two hours to play the game. At the end of two hours, if you hadn't finished, whoever was ahead won. That's how, that's how he beat me. He beat me by a point. Ah, so ah, curses. Months, curses. So months later, I got my revenge. <laughs> We're playing at their place, at Grace Christian Academy. Same guy I'm yes, up against. Yes. I take the early lead by a point. Ah. And do I kill time while he chases me around the board? <laughs> Hell yes, I do. And it's like 7 o'clock rolls around. They're like, game time. And I'm up by a point, and I'm like, "Woo! Payback's the bitch!" Grace Christian Academy. Anyway, all right, there we go. Sorry, off track, off track. Sorry, uh, chess in the park, chess in the park. Um, but, but anyway, so uh, so yeah, there, yeah, there was some. I think maybe the story, the plotting was a little clunky to get to this thing that they wanted to get to. I think it was a noble goal to get there. And I think, uh, you know, having Lon make that choice. And even though, and when she breaks down, I think there's a part of that is, is, as I mentioned, cathartic sense of like, okay, I now accept it. Like she is now accepted. I could have changed it. I had, I could have killed him off and then lived in a world where, because she, I guess with the power of the time turner, she wasn't going to be affected by that choice. She wouldn't like, I'll never be born. But in other words, it, it took that part of the choice out of her. Like you could just say like, well, I can't kill him because then I'll die. But in her mind, I think sure. the idea was the only thing keeping me from killing this kid is the moral choice of it. And I know that the future will be brighter for the Starfleet, for instance, it'll exist and that kind of thing. And so I've made that choice. And now having made that choice, she can move forward. She didn't have to think about it. You know, like, well, what if, da, 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 da. You know, there are some drawbacks to this episode, as we've mentioned, but uh, it is it is an effective episode. And, yeah, I appreciate it. Again, much like we had the perform two performances working to hold up the episode last week in the courtroom, I think we had two performances that held up this one as well. We had Kirk and Lon, yep. and it's, it's the two of them interacting. Um, and I thought they the two of them uh, held this episode up uh, quite nicely. I expanded wider. You know, certainly Carol Kane did did a great job, and uh, Mbenga, uh, Sarah, the uh, the Romulan, and again the uh, that time agent uh, Emily at the end of it. I really thought she okay. was great too. Do you think so, we're gonna see, see them again? I'd like to, the, although I'd be surprised the, the though if we did. To me, it's a testament to um, the untapped wealth of the you know this world is that. I don't know why no one's pitched a time variance show, you know. <laughs> yep, yep. You know the no, you're uh, right. time investigation show. It could be very much like a uh, you know, um, like Loki season X one. Files kind of thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I agree. Yeah. I agree. They've got the the organization already set up, so let's, you know uh, they could uh, you 
do an, a show too that's set around the time of Noonien Singh. You know, I mean, sorry, the first Noonien Singh there of Khan, actually. Yep. You yep, know, yep. that would be an anti-hero show, and they don't have anything like that. Uh, so they could do that. There's a lot of possibilities with uh, what they could do, and it, you know, they're. It's like, you know, it's in the future. You know, uh, I want to push back a little too on this whole deal. Why can't he t- tell anybody? Who would care? What would happen? That's <laughs> a great point. I thought the same thing. Cause she's like, wait, I have to hide all this inside. I have to bottle it. Yeah. And I'm like, yes. Yeah, no one it, can know. What do you mean, no one can know? I, Why? I, I wonder how if would it really what they matter? don't want. Is this like okay? Yeah, this is really like a bottle show. Where it's like, you know, yeah, you never know, talk about this again. No talking about it again. We're not even going to show scenes from it ever again. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're, that's a great point. That's a great point because I, yeah, I, I suppose in universe the idea is like we, they don't want people knowing a lot about this their time authority people. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, but uh, you know, it, but didn't, yeah, it, it didn't hurt them in Deep Space Nine to have these people come. So, there you go. You know. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not going to hurt them that Lon knows. Yeah, so no, no. why would it hurt if two people knew yeah, yeah. or three? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's a weird one. They're like, what? You? I think she could. I think she could nod and go, "You're right. I'll do that." Yeah. And then as soon as they leave, like, yeah. "Okay, I'm gonna go." Yeah, what's it gonna do? Well-being. Send like a cop to stop her? <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. So, um, we will be back talking about episode four. Um and um thank you as always Paul I appreciate oh, it good you're sir you're welcome and we will talk to everybody next time bye bye <laughs>